so Blackwater Park, huh, you know, I've always looked through this every time, even with having gone on Wikipedia, and yet, I'm just now finding out the release, the actual day, I know it was 2001, but shit, this, this fucker came out on my birthday? Shit, I should talk about a missed opportunity. Oh boy. Regardless, we'll just talk about it now. So, here we go. Opeth Blackwater Park. Ah. Oh. <sighs> this would be the band's it's been pretty much 20 years. This is essentially something something of a legacy edition version that I've got here that I bought a few years ago. It's when I started getting to it. Yeah, I just now. Or as you've seen from the thumbnail, yeah. If not the opener here, but uh, this album came out that day in 2001. Shit. Hmm. Wonder what else came out on those days of my birthday. That would have been really fucking awesome. Ah, the many, many wonders of life. I tell you. But, uh, but regardless, Blackwater Park, we all know this is, everyone already knows, this is a classic in of itself. From its opening track here, near that you briefly heard of with look with the Leopard Affinity. This being the first album, I believe the band chose not to make it as a concept, as well as being the first album to have producer, sir, and well-noted, cons considered at the time, modern prog, prog, prog rock aficionado it's uh, himself, Stephen Wilson, more known for his work with Porcupine Tree, and eventually, eventually other as well eventually who would eventually go on to have an interesting solo career going into the 2010s following 10s as well as porcupine tree having from this point forward as i had stated in my in absence sentient i think since i might i might have got that spelled that wrong but that particular porcupine tree album that followed this one is exactly what I was talking about that I was hoping to want to talk about but I decided to hold off yes and as far as I'm concerned the more you know and to think that like literally now I look at the date of today it's like shit shit I got three fucking shit I'm like off by like four months I should have done this. Jesus. But we're doing it now. Uh, this album would be number five in the discography. This would, and would become the first album that actually did get them some notice, or at least get them a release date stateside, because prior to that, around the point of 1999 and 2000, uh, which even though 2000 was when this album was recorded, it was around 99, around the time the band had, already recorded I guess the previous already had two two albums already in a row I don't know if their companion pieces really towards each other but they wound up slightly being similar with one being more experimental the other was it was the stupid dream um, light bulb sun era of the band porcupine trees so it was this and that's what most people knew of them so through having Stephen Wilson involved probably did enough to get everyone to notice about Opeth and of itself, not that they weren't already making traction from their previous album, Still Life, and already doing super well within the four albums prior that they've made. This being the first without being a concept, and you can tell Stephen Wilson's production, given what he's done throughout the 90s up to that, up until the point of Light Bulb Sun, and how this record could also affect what he would do forward with Porcupine Tree, and in some instances here nor there with the follow-up albums, Deliverance and, and Damnation. Damnation being probably the best progressive rock-based album they've ever made. 
this album is probably is where Martin Lopez was actually drumming for the band before, prior to his time with Sullen, and now which which I had mentioned prior to before. Ah, uh, this man just the more and more reasons to make me like this record, you know. And I've probably may wind up living having now listened to this album in such a so many times in such a way that it is up there with another 2001 album that I've already talked about being la being that of Tools Lateralis both of which pretty much shaped progressive metal throughout the rest of the tw what would be shaping progressive metal f from the more the le from one extreme to the, from a more traditional sense of progressive metal to the more extreme sense which is where Opeth comes in moving forward Besides what Devin Townsend would probably do here and there, I guess. If anybody at the time cared as much that wasn't in the metal scene. But, yeah. Overall, I enjoy... I mean, I've pretty much... Y'all know before I even do anything with this. This album rocks its master class. Just, you, we all know this. And it's just from this... And, of course... His usual fascination was the occult, all these sorts of things of imagery. Bleak being one more that is about the dude so heartbroken that he results in murdering his former partner uh, within Bleak. Which, in of itself, the track seems bleak in of itself, and it's probably one of the few times on the tr on the album where Stephen Wilson does his vocals. But through, th through this, you can kind of tell, given this is probably one of the first, not so much the first, but one of the... A few albums where he does focus on actually giving off a little more cleans, singing Michael e Mikhail Eckerfeld, and uh, and his cleans are great. His cleans are amazing, and I've his cleans are amazing, and I understand why he wanted to focus more on doing them instead of Death Growls, even though the Death Growls on his studio releases at least, or at least he knew how to produce them well, have. And that's the thing. I've listened to the one... Upon listening to those other albums, I've yet to go back to those as much as I have with this. And I like those records, but for some reason, it didn't, like with Opeth, didn't click until this record when I got to it during a binging session to, like, prepare for Sorcerers back in the day. And that's how long ago it was. You know, when that came out, that's when I started binging on these records and stuff. So I was looking for one, and... This is was one. Liber Affinity is a great. Is was one of the better openers for sure. Harvest is a classic among their more progressive rock tinge. This is essentially more so a death metal record with the progressive rock elements, or at least the way it comes off production wise. It's very much. You see, the band's style was very much in its earlier phases from Orchid and and Morning Rise were more the bands. My was prior to My Arms Your Hearse, which Hearse and Still Life. Those albums were more had a more of a balancing act of black and death metal, and it seemed the band was starting. And Eckerfeld prior to was in Catatonia back during the Death Doom days of the band. So I'm surprised some of the more Doom elements didn't uh, seep in a lot more. Into the into into like the later era stuff, you know, they like you could have, you know. I mean, it's not like they don't show it here and there in some of the instrumentations on later albums, but regardless, this album is where the band seemed to go more in the death metal area of things with their sound and kind of strip away the more blackened elements. Even though it seems that the folk metal based elements that make up or at least the more Swedish folk influences they may have had through their more uh, more atmospheric or at least the tendencies of the more atmospheric black metal stuff that they were incorporating into their sound from the earlier days does seem to seep in with this with this and their more Swedish death metal influences together with more some progressive rock tinged elements more so in the production that Stephen Wilson brings to the table and his collaborative efforts and and also if you did get this edition before the new apparent uh, reissue stuff they're doing for the 20th anniversary which I've yet to bother to get that or afford to get it for that matter on my end but uh, 
which I'm lucky they are talking about this. I just hope, I don't think we're gonna get, another, just don't ask for another like, Blackwater Park or Still Life from these guys. But if they can even remotely do anything damnation level good or greatness, I, I'd be happy with that, you know, cause it doesn't, or at least do something of that nature. At least it'll be better than what they've been putting out, but you know, but even though what they've been putting out has at least been better than Heritage, but. And I, I don't know if they just need to stop looking too much towards what Wilson laid down for them, or if they need to go into some other territories, but I've enjoyed this, and I mean, of course, a lot of these tracks have been, besides Blink, Drapery Falls is also, the first half of this record is definitely super strong, the latter half is still good too. Dirge of November and the Funeral Portrait, though, having listened to the Funeral Portrait too many times uh, through this through this CD, having scratched, unfortunately, on my end, but which is why I've been listening to it in other ways. Funeral Port, I mean, it's pretty solid. I mean, and is definitely one of the underrated ones. Patterns in the Ivy is pretty much more of an instrumental piece, but it's not a bad one. But the title, the closing title track is still by many fans, even if you're not into that, in, if there was ever like a track to get into this band, it is this title track, without question. I mean, most people will tell you um, Ghost of Perdition off of Ghost Reveries, what more off of Ghost Reveries would be another one most people would say, but I think Blackwater Park does a better job of getting into getting a more having the right a level of and amount of hooks in into their sound and that they saved the best one of those few, many few examples of an album that saves the best for last even though it also starts off like i said starting off strong with leopard infinity well this is pretty strong and definitely one of the better tracks that does that i understood why it was a single for this record for sure but even though blackwater park just has the right intro riffing in this especially for people who have more of a thing for the more thrashy or more metallica or at least i'm not even sure i can't even think what they used for tone aside from the fact that i guess he had been used they've been using prs's i don't know exactly if there was some specific uh gear that they might have used on the album itself. Uh, they'll even tell me in this edition, I doubt it, but, uh. but yeah, it's, and the album did initially wind up being titled after a German progressive rock band too. But yes, it's one of the better tracks that are just super layered and has and does go on extensive journey in a good way and it's one of the better tracks that ends that album off pretty well and has one of the better one of the better more fun riffs to play that you that are probably pretty complex to play and i'm told that uh, the tuning wise it's a specific swedish folk tuning uh that is utilized or at least a danish one i'm not sure scandinavian some sort more likely swedish but yeah that's what i uh, that he they were using on Blackwater Park. More for more information, watch the uh, Become the Night talks about all these riffs, and the riffs that he does talk about is the intro for Blackwater Park. Uh, and you should check that out. He'll he'll do a better job talking about it than me. Heck, I wish I could play it like he he could play it even remotely close to the way he at least plays it, if not the way Michael and. Peter, which by the way, that's it makes sense why it's of the songs on this album. It's one of the few that isn't my just Michael Eckerfeld's right being the, considered the writing. It was essentially every song, song except the this title track and Dirge of November were all very much written. That one was uh, co written between Eckerfeld and Lynn and Peter Lind Lindgren, if I'm spam, spelling that or Lindgren. However, it is in Swedish. I'm sorry. Stupid American. <laughs> uh, and that, and how, and which makes even more sense with the closing title track. That really just 
trust me, just musically and just how smooth this record goes along is just what makes this album all the more of a journey, just despite its somewhat still bleak dark tone, but it does have just a much brighter, more interesting tinge to the way it is in its production. It's you could tell it's very the second track's name pretty much sums up a lot of the way this record is in terms of just how bleak but also sort of foggy and misty in its production just the way it's done and how some of that did sort of transition a little bit into how uh Stephen Wilson would produce his other stuff as I would have mentioned before but regardless like I said, this album's super great. If you haven't had a chance to listen to this album already, get it. I don't know if you'll get this version, but if you're able to get that 20th anniversary edition, uh, I don't know if the whole package that of itself is worth it or not, whatever cost that's gonna be, but the album itself, yes, absolutely. Even the, and if you do get this version, they do, t Eggerfeld does leave something about his time from his thoughts back in 2010 when this reissue had come out and what his thoughts were on it. I uh, don't know if he adds more extra thoughts about it since 2010, since it's now 2021, and where he feels at with, within the 20 years, but hope 20 years later, which I feel dirty now knowing that this album's literally just 12 years younger than me, technically. Sheesh. I feel like I should wait till next year so I can take it out for drinks. <laughs> um, see, I don't, I don't know how it is in Sweden with their limits for, uh, for when it's legal to drink, for, for everyone there. But if it's the same as ours, then the whole twenty-one joke, you get it. Uh, but anyways, those are my thoughts on pretty much the album. It's classic, or at least what I could muster with how long I've waited to do this. So, but if not, or at least nothing I could say that hasn't already been said about this album and how great it is and how much of a dadgum masterpiece it is that you all should be going and listening to um, right now after you've pretty much done doing that. You could probably, I'm just saying, this album's. It just it slays. Everyone talk this thing up. It's a classic for a reason. I get if some people feel like Still Life is a stronger release. Uh, but... Oh, and sh shout out to the guys from... Uh, for those who did see the thumbnail, shout out to... The... Uh, Dude from the dude from Metal Meltdown and stuff. That's that's how that's the moment I f actually figured out and realized it when the date was was my freaking birthday of all things. <sighs> I feel like I should spin it every birthday. You know, I'd spin it any day. But regardless, what did you guys think of Blackwater Park after 20 years? It still hold up pretty well for you, or? Did some other albums from them wind up surpassing it for you, like Ghost Reveries or even Still Life or even anything earlier than that? I've, you know? Or anything after that, or even Damnation. I've heard some people talk that up a lot sometimes, you know? Even for being a progressive rock record and not a metal one. Whatever thoughts you have about them, leave a comment below and let me know. As always, as always, guys, keep it random, keep it real, keep rocking. I will see you in the next video, whatever that may be took care y'all also if you did like this video rock it with thrust if you must link in the description below to all my other pages my facebook page like and follow me there amongst some other things from other stuff i do on this channel uh, also hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell and yeah once again keep it keep it keep rocking take care y'all